हेलो Good evening, participants. Am I audible? So, uh, Bishujit sir, you are there. Bishujit sir. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here. Am I audible? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir. Sir, uh, we shall wait for little more time. Uh, uh, we are waiting for some more participants to join. So, shall we wait for few more minutes? Okay, no problem. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Hmm.
Bishwajit sir, you there? Yeah. Oh. Okay, sir, we shall start, start now, sir? Yeah, we can. No, no. Okay, okay, thank you. Sir. So, uh, good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to the third evening of the AICT Training and Learning Academy Faculty Development Program on Fundamentals of Theme Film Preparation and Characterization Techniques. <clears throat> For two. Today, the speaker will be Dr. Bishwajit Saha from the Department of Physics, IT Agurkam. Our honorable speaker of the evening, Dr. Saha. Dr. Saha is right now working as an assistant professor at NIT Agartala, Tripura. Dr. Saha completed his master's from Tripura University and later completed his PhD from Jadhukpur University. Dr. Shah's main research interest lies within low dimensional semiconductor physics, specifically quantum phenomena in natural superlatives, charge transport in polymer semiconductor, application of low dimensional materials for green energy and sustainable environment, thin film and nanoscience, etc. Dr. Shah has published more than 60 research articles in internationally peer-reviewed journals. He has handled one research product, project and he is handling one more research project funded by DST and CSIR. With this note, I welcome you, Dr. Shaha, and I would like to uh, say, sir, please deliver your speech. Am I audible? Yes, sir, completely. You can share your screen, okay. sir. Thank you, Ritanabo, for your uh, kind introduction. Thank you. Good evening to one and all present in this uh, program, uh, Faculty Development Program, organized by the Physics Department of Tripura University, Physics Department of Tripura University. I am really delighted to be uh, in this program amongst you in this uh, Faculty Development Program. And uh, so, out my lecture in the next coming hours, I shall try to produce some discussions and uh, deliberation over the sputtering process and uh, relevant uh, vacuum technology and uh, the plasma physics related to creation of plasma for producing a sputtering unit for preparation of thin film. So let me now open the PPT and uh, share this. Is it now visible? Yes, it is visible, sir. Visible. Okay, fine. Yes, sir. So, this presentation is entitled as uh, Vacuum System and its application with reference to the sputtering technique of thin film preparation. The layout of the presentation is like this. At first, I shall try to draw an uh, overview on the materials in low dimensions. Particularly, uh, this uh, faculty development program is uh, focused on the low dimension material. So a brief introduction will be given since uh, in the previous lectures also, uh, this kind of discussions might be there. And uh, then uh, we shall move to thin film deposition techniques, the so different techniques which are available for thin film preparation. Just uh, having a knowledge on the names and uh, a brief idea about those techniques. We shall move towards a brief introduction about the vacuum system. As I mentioned earlier, that uh, vacuum system and its knowledge is required for several physical method of synthesis. So we shall have a brief introduction on vacuum system. Later on, we shall move to introduction to plasma. It's a very interesting part, uh, which we usually uh, see in sun and in some artificial uh, 
manner we can produce plasma in natural and artificial plasma we see but the application of plasma for producing thin film we shall see in this uh, next coming slides then uh, we shall move to the technique of sputtering for thin film deposition and uh, its uh, components uh, how this unit is built up and work an introduction will be given to radio frequency magnetron sputtering and dc sputtering there are two specific type of sputtering one is called radio frequency sputtering magnetron sputtering and another is dc sputtering then the advantages of this technique will be discussed finally radio frequency magnetron sputtering system and its application in thin film deposition and uh, uh, preparing special kind and uh, introducing the important properties to the thin film will be discussed and uh, followed by conclusions yeah. at first let us have a view on the nano scale and nano science these two words are basically very much familiar uh, nano science and nano technology nano scale in this recent world uh, even it is uh, familiar to school students also but the term nano is not only for length scale or nano materials or nano science this is a common uh, term and prefix uh, used for different measuring units we can consider about the current nano ampere voltage nano volt anything can be mentioned with nano but here uh, in the science particularly science and technology this nano science and nano technology specifically refer to the length space coordinate so obviously in this uh, faculty development program we are also uh, going to discuss something related to length scale only and the entire world the physical world what we see in the scale of length we can uh, divide it into two part one is our own size as a human being we are of uh 1.5 meter around so in a meter is a standard size of our body size and uh, most of the objects which we handle in our everyday life is of the order of meter and centimeter like that and uh, for distance measuring we use a kilometer but if we go above then there are some uh, uh, galaxies and uh, the things where the scale is in the upper uh, range but if we move to the lower side of the scale then we go to millimeter micrometer and then nanometer then why this nanometer become very much important where picometer femtometer altometer are there but still we are discussing about the nanometer that is basically the physical world which we attend is built of atoms and molecules and all of us know that atom has a dimension of the order of n to the power minus 10 meter if we consider a few collection of mat, uh, atoms to get a physical object very small object then it must be a collection of a few number of atoms which will be in the range of 10 to the power minus 9 meter or a bit above of that that is why this nanometer is very much useful for describing the physical world which we see and which we can handle in the form of meter if you go beyond then the existence of atom will be not there we shall have to move to the atomic nucleus but nucleus itself is basically no variety there are only protons and neutrons so the various things various organic inorganic uh, whatever variety of the molecules we see and we use with different kind of properties and the world as at present what we are seeing is basically made of atoms and molecules so anything we want to do in the form of uh, matter then it must be greater than an atom so nanometer is the smallest area where people can work to produce any devices or develop some properties or introduce some new properties to the matter so that is the science which is related with nanometer okay we shall restrict up to nanometer only so nano science is basically the understanding of understanding and control of matter at dimensions roughly 1 to 100 nanometer all of us know it is basically uh, nowadays it is taught in the school level also however uh, let us proceed. So, if we move uh, forward, then uh, lowering the dimension can take place in three space coordinates. Our physical world is basically constructed by three space coordinates, and any event can be described by four coordinates only, along with three coordinates, another is time. So, any kind of event can be described at this time, at this position. Okay. 
So matter which exists in three dimension, now we are approaching to reduce the dimension. If we reduce the dimension in a particular direction only, keeping other two dimension unaffected, then what we get is a thin film. This is the figure you can uh, see this figure. This thin film has two dimensions in the bulk region. It is not restricted to a or con confined with a small region like uh, less than 100 nanometer, but one direction, in one direction it has been confined. So that is the thing. It is called thin film because it looks like a film. That is, it's two dimension. It is uh, described in two dimensions. It can be described in two dimensions. So why is it called two dimensions? And uh, why should we consider about the confinement in one dimension? That is basically related to the electron. Whatever we see, different properties, different chemical reactions, and different physical properties, development of physical properties, and changing everything, everything happens only because of some kind of interaction. If we miss the interaction term, or if we find the interaction is not present, then nothing can happen with the materials in the world or in the universe. Every physical phenomena is related to the interaction. And this interaction is basically taking place in terms of the electrons in the outermost orbit for atom and in the uh, different energy bands, balance band, conduction band, or in the case of molecule, we can say in the homolomo different uh, energy states of molecules. So these electrons and their interaction with other material describe what are their physical properties. Electrons, their motion, are confined within one direction, then it is called thin film, and other two directions are free, so that electron can move freely in the other two directions. That is the thin film is. Secondly, if we uh, confine in two different directions, say x and y, or y and z, or z and x, and keeping other dimension as it is, then what we get is something like OR one dimensional material. In that case, the electron's motion is confined in two dimension and free in one dimension. And if we confine all the three dimensions, that what we get is a quantum dot. The most interesting thing is the electrons when got confined, then its motion basically got confined. And its motion is related to its energy, momentum, everything. So how the electron will interact with another material, it will be dependent on its energy state in the system where it is now. So confining in dimension makes the electron confined by its motion and as a result or consequence we can say the energy states of the electron get modified. Because electron being a subatomic particle, its uh, dynamics is controlled by quantum mechanics. We all know about the well-known Schrodinger equation by which we can find the wave function and then uh, we can uh, analyze its energy states, different energy states. Okay, so after that let us move to the thin film part only because this uh, program is mainly on low dimension materials and thin film and techniques for preparation of thin film. So all these things we shall see one by one. As we know that thin film uh, is a system where two of its dimension are free for the movement of the electron. So these systems are particularly very useful to observe the effect of charge and energy quantization in one direction. As a result, what happens? It gets discrete energy levels. The energy levels are uh, no, no longer continuous. Because of its confinement effect, the energy levels are discrete, means uh, there are some gap between the some allowed energy levels. And due to the occurrence of the quantization in energy level, when you consider a large number of atoms together and uh, find a crystal, then we know that we have to apply this uh, mathematical calculations are not shown and will not be discussed here, but the result we shall discuss. There we shall find that some energy bands will be formed. 
that is electrons can be found in some allowed bands of energy which uh, all of you know about the conduction band and the valence band in semiconductor because of occurrence of this uh, conduction band and valence band there will be some gap between the two bands which is called formidum region this will be produced in thin film and due to this the energy band gap can be modulated so occurrence of energy band gap and modulation of the energy band gap will be possible and we can increase the energy band gap and we can modify the density of the energy levels so these fundamental things which shall be occurring in a two dimensional system like thin film because of the electron confinement will be effective for devising different uh, appliances electronic devices and using these electronic properties for interaction with other things like phonons photons and other materials despite of this if we uh, consider a thin film from its uh, uh, as a whole then it is not fully dense it uh, is under stress and uh, different defect structures are possible then uh, it has quasi two dimensional means it is a thin film because it is not fully two dimensional it is quasi two dimension because it has a extent in the confined direction also it may be around 100 nanometer and strongly influenced by the surface and interface effects because of the occurrence of the electrons in different energy states along the surface its activity along the surface become different and it differently interact through the surface with its surroundings so that is the utility of the thin film next uh, one more important thing is uh, the electronic structure electronic structure means electronic band structure so electronic band structure is highly dependent on another important term which we know as density of states so let us first discuss about the density of states density of state is basically the number of available energy states per unit energy range per unit volume i am repeating density of state is basically the number of allowed energy states per unit energy range per unit volume that is if we consider a system of materials then the number of the electrons how many electrons can be obtained at a particular energy is dependent on the value of the energy itself and it is governed by the quantum state of the electron so the density of state become dependent on the physical appearance of the material say two dimensional material one dimensional material or zero dimensional quantum dot and accordingly its energy states are modified and density of state is also modified the density of state calculation can be obtained by solving the schrodinger equation in different uh, states and the results come like this uh, you can see here uh, three equations first one is for the three dimension two dimension and one dimension so all these three dimension we can see the density of state is basically dependent on energy e to the power half then it is a uh, step like d and then e to the power minus of d so the figure you can see there are three different graphs this is a continuous one for a bulk then you can see this is for thin film then this is for one dimension and this is for zero dimension so for all these three different dimensional configuration of the system of electron so we are basically 2d 1d whatever we are considering these are basically system of electrons within which the electrons will uh, move and the electrons will show its dynamics differently and accordingly the density of states indicate that some discontinuity comes when we move from 3d to 2d because there is uh, the variation of the density of state is step like step like means uh, at the edge of the step there is a discontinuity so that the discreteness in the density of states comes first and which results in the discreteness in the energy levels that is why fundamentally one can imagine that the electron is governed by the 
density of states, its energy states, energy value, everything which become quantized. And due to that reason, the interaction of this electron within this material system is dependent on the size and shape of the material. These are the fundamental ideas why we shall be interesting about the low dimensional system of material. Sometimes it appears many people today that uh, the material science is a matter of uh, discussions or science where only some new materials are made and properties are measured. Not like that. It is, it is fully physics and chemistry inside which are very much interesting. Okay. So, in this slide, we shall see thin film deposition techniques. Different thin film deposition techniques can be uh, seen in this list. And uh, outside this, there are uh, so many techniques also because day by day, different techniques are being developed. But there are all fundamental techniques uh, can be divided into three parts. The physical vapor deposition technique, chemical vapor deposition technique, and uh, solution-based chemistry. Uh, these are basically three broad categories by which the preparation of the thin film can be achieved. And uh, in the first, the physical system, we can find the thermal evaporation, fast laser deposition, molecular pneumatics, sputtering like that. Chemical vapor deposition, we can obtain metal organic uh, chemical vapor deposition, low pressure chemical vapor deposition, atmospheric chemical pressure deposition, plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition, and there are so many methods in solution-based chemistry. These are chemical back deposition, soil gel process, skin coating, deep coating, skin printing, spray pyrolysis, and nowadays many other, uh, uh, you can say the complex uh, systems are being developed, which are basically composition of all different chemical vapor solution-based chemistry. So this composition may lead to a large number of such deposition techniques, preparation techniques for thin films. Okay, anyway, let us move to the next slide. So, in this, uh, we shall discuss about the sputtering technique only because uh, this particular lecture is uh, focused on the sputtering technique of film deposition. This is a physical technique. So, before we enter into the sputtering technique, let us have an idea about the term sputtering. Basically, uh, I shall mention about uh, the atomic configuration of a solid where the molecules and atoms are attached in a solid by virtue of Van der Waal bond or some kind of binding energy you can say. We can detach some atoms and molecules from a solid if we can impart some amount of energy to the solid. Sputtering is basically a technique by which we shall impart energy or more specifically we shall say we shall impart momentum to a solid and this momentum will bring the atom or molecule at a higher energy state and if this energy is sufficient enough, if this energy or momentum is sufficient enough to detach this molecule from the target then this atom or molecule will be ejected out from the solid. And this ejected atom carrying some momentum can move to another direction where it can be collected. So that atomic layer deposition on another substrate can be achieved by such kind of technique. And when this technique was developed and found in uh, application of preparation of thin film and some other applications, this is known as the sputtering. So on atomic level, it is written here, you all can see that on atomic level, sputtering is the process whereby atoms are ejected from a target or a source material that is to be deposited on a substrate. Such as silicon wafer, solar panel or optical devices, and as a result of the bombardment of the target by high energy particle, this uh, sputtering process is possible. So sputtering is the thin film deposition manufacturing process at the core of today's semiconductor industry. Because different disk, drive, CD, optical devices, optical coating, solar cell, electrode, 
and then uh, UV protection or uh, light interacting transparent uh, coating in many applications this sputtering technique is useful. In the figure you can see the brief introduction about the sputtering system is given where uh, two electrodes are there cathode and anode they are given an electric field and at a low pressure some gas molecules are inserted inserted into a system vacuum system under that condition when this uh, gas molecules suffer an electric field then this gas molecule get ionized or some of the molecules get ionized and ionized molecules are accelerated towards the cathode and anode respectively the ions and the electrons as a result what happens the ions and electrons get some kinetic energy and they make some secondary collision with the remaining gas molecules and some more ionization secondary ionization takes place this creates a plasma glowing plasma inside in this way the high energy ions being accelerated and acquiring higher kinetic energy they collide with the target and they impart some momentum you can see in this figure uh, these are the this yellow this yellow molecules are basically uh, the, these are coming from the target and uh, some other ions which are moving upward this gray color this these are moving upward and this make collision with the target and ejected target atoms this yellow and the, this one uh, yellow one and the orange one these are coming down after getting interaction with the ions the ions impart momentum to the target molecule or atom and they get ejected out and they come down with some momentum and they are deposited on another substrate this is one this one is the substrate where they get deposited and the film is produced so this is just a brief introductory idea about the technique of sputtering but if we want to understand the technique of sputtering then we need to know some peripheral things like already we have mentioned that for sputtering we require vacuum we require to create plasma so a brief idea about the vacuum system an introduction a brief introduction of preliminary ideas about plasma and creation of plasma these are required so let me just uh, spend a few slide for these topics in this page you can see uh, this is just given as a uh, three different important part of basic understanding for the sputtering technique uh, you can see there is fundamental vacuum physics then working of vacuum pumps this is given and uh, you can see that uh, generation of plasma is the third part which we shall look on okay so moving to the uh, introduction to vacuum physics the word vacuum is uh, very much important in science if we uh, say about the vacuum then what is vacuum uh, especially in physics at first we shall consider about the free space free space is basically uh, a space where you can find x y z coordinates and uh, volume but there will be no material no gas molecule no atoms nothing so then we can say it is a perfect vacuum and we know it as a free space but here vacuum doesn't mean free space exactly in this discussion we shall uh, consider vacuum as a volume where the pressure will be low so the range of vacuum can be categorized based on the pressure inside the chamber where the low pressure are generated in a rough discussions we can say uh, when we use a vacuum pump then the molecules or the 
atoms inside or the gaseous molecules are basically exhausted out from the system and then the pressure decreases inside and it is called a rough or low vacuum when it is uh, 1 millibar within 1 millibar that is starting from atmospheric pressure to 1 millibar that is 1 bar to 1 millibar if one can create a pressure inside a system lower than this say 1 to 10 to the power minus 3 millibar basically 10 to the power up to 10 to the power minus 6 bar 10 to the power minus 3 millibar or 10 to the power minus 6 bar then it is called medium vacuum mv if we can produce a chamber having pressure as low as 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 7 millibar that is called high vacuum and moving to next stage 10 to the power minus 7 to 10 to the power minus 12 millibar that is ultra high vacuum and extreme high vacuum will be lower than 10 to the power minus 3 millibar so you can imagine now 10 to the power minus 12 millibar what kind of pump will be required to exhaust a system to get a vacuum as much as 10 to the power minus 12 millibar by ordinary pumps we can uh, produce a vacuum up to 10 to the power minus 3 millibar easily which we know as the rotary pump so we have to understand the pump system whether a pump is capable of producing a vacuum as we are saying in the different range so for this understanding we need to know some vacuum technology and the uh, system for creating vacuum which in general known as the vacuum pumps there are three important terms related to the vacuum pumps these are throughputs pumping speed and conductance conductance is related with the vacuum system and the piping system through which the gas molecules are basically conducted to get out from the system and pumping speed is very important to get the gas molecules exhausted out with a very rapid uh, cycle so that a desired vacuum can be achieved shortly and throughput is basically the measurement of the vacuum which can be created by a the ability of the pump basically vacuum pump this uh, slide is uh, some brief introduction with some brief introduction about the pump vacuum pump parameters so to understand the vacuum technology at first let us consider the occurrence of different important equations which are basically governing the vacuum system for this let us consider two volume so v1 and v2 are two volume uh, which has pressures q1 and q2 respectively and q uh, is amount of uh, say some amount of gas and uh, its energy power basically conducted from one region to another region through a pipe and in that cases we can represent one important equation related to the fluid dynamics which is equal to q is given by q is equal to p dvdt <coughs> q dvdt so what is q uh, q is basically throughput and how it can be understood q can be understood as a power carried by a gas flowing out if we look into the right hand side of the equation q is equal to p dvdt then one can understand easily p is the unit it has a unit of pressure while dvdt is volume some volume per unit time so pascal per pascal meter cube per second will be the dimension or unit in the right hand side of the equation so if we understand this then we can get newton meter per second and we know newton meter is nothing but joule joule per second which is basically watt so we can say how much energy per unit time is basically transferred due, during the time of vacuum is called the throughput is dv 
DT and the T pressure, it controls the throughput. And DVDT is the volumetric flow rate, basically how much volume of the gas inside a chamber is exhausted out is called DVDT and it is related to the pumping speed. Therefore, we can write the first equation as Q is equal to P into X. RP is the pressure and DVDT is the pumping speed. And in the right hand side, we can see another basic equation, which is uh, the second important equation in vacuum technology. Q is equal to C dot P1 minus P2, that is C into delta P. And all of us basically uh, familiar with the well-known equation of uh, electric current, that is Ohm's law, current is equal to G by R. That is, electric current is proportional to the potential difference and uh, it is uh, inversely proportional to the resistance or we can say the proportional to conductance. That is Ohm's law. Similarly, for the Bacon system also, we can draw an equation like Q is equal to C delta P, where delta P plays the role, same role as the potential difference plays, voltage difference plays in case of charge flow. In case of Bacon system, the flow is basically gas molecules, flow of gas molecules. In case of electric circuit, these are basically flow of charge, ions, or in general, you can say these are electrons. So, we can draw a equivalence between the conductance of the gas molecules through a vacuum pipe and the conductance of electrons through a conductor wire. The higher the conductance, more the current, that is throughput will be more. So in vacuum technology, we have to look into the piping systems also, whether this pipe can produce higher conductance or lower resistance to the throughput. It is basically not possible to demonstrate uh, physically by a PowerPoint. The uh, vacuum system is uh, very much interesting and uh, we can uh, compare it with the electric circuit also. And uh, such kind of fluid dynamics driven uh, circuits are also possible. I shall show one such uh, uh, instrument of sputtering system in my next coming slides where the fluid dynamics will be used in instead of the electric current for some moving parts. Okay, let us uh, proceed to the next slide. There are uh, pump classifications in this slide one can see since we have to work with the pumps for producing the vacuum. So vacuum pump can be classified into two parts, gas transfer and capture. These are cry uh, in gas transfer, there can be two different types, positive displacement and kinetic. Actually, we shall restrict our discussion in the gas transfer only because uh, the pump which will be useful for the sputtering system chemical deposition is a gas transfer system and for this we require gas transfer type of vacuum pumps. In positive displacement pump, there can be two different types, reciprocating and uh, rotary. Among these two, rotary is much useful and it is a positive and primary category of pump. So, we shall discuss about the rotary pump which is basically used in RF and DC sputtering system. Particularly for vacuum technology, this is a well-known and uh, largely used pump. Next one is the kinetic pump, where kinetic pump uh, is another type of pump which can generate high vacuum, but it cannot work individually because it is a secondary type of pump. Well, the rotary pump is a primary type of pump and it can work individually. So, in this uh, discussions, we shall restrict only two different types of pumps which are used as a combination for the vacuum system, that is rotary pump and diffusion pump. You can see uh, in gas transfer system, there are two different uh, pump systems. Uh, diffusion pump in the kinetic and it also belongs to the gas transfer 
and another is positive displacement pump rotary pump and in rotary pump we shall discuss about the wet rotary pump because it is called wet rotary because it use some oil silicon oil let us move to the next so this is about positive displacement pump the pump makes the fluid move by trapping a fixed amount and forcing the volume into the discharge pipe the fluid liquid flows into the pump as a cavity on a suction side and opens or expands whilst the liquid flow into the discharge as a cavity closes or decreases so every cycle of operation the volume is the same and it is discharged outside i think this kind of statement may not make the picture clear just uh, i shall show one video for its proper understanding but before that let me uh, just uh, explain this sentence once again so that it will be helpful to understand the video basically uh, in positive displacement pump we have to capture trap some amount of gas molecules in a cavity and then the cavity will expand expand means the pressure will be lower during the time of expansion in a uh, that is volume increase the pressure becomes low so in that case in order to make the pressure equivalent some of the molecules from the system comes into the cavity so that the low pressure always attract some molecules from the high pressure region so when the cavity is expanding and then more number of gas molecules come to the cavity and after a certain time the cavity closes so no more amount of gas will come inside and then the cavity start shrinking means its volume decreases as the volume decreases its pressure increases and once upon a time the high pressure gas molecules are ex exhausted outside in this way the cycle are allowed to move inside the pump for with a high speed and in every cycle some amount of gas molecules are exhausted outside this is positive displacement pump and this pump can easily be applied to throw out the gas molecules in the open environment ambient condition and the second pump is the kinetic pump the first pump is, uh, example is uh, rotary pump oil seal rotary vane pump this is called primary pump and if we go to the second part that is kinetic pump this is a secondary pump kinetic pumps which operate in the high vacuum and ultra high vacuum range this kind of examples we can find in turbo molecular pump diffusion pump and vapor booster pump they employ some spinning blades and the supersonic vapors jets or some boiling oil gas molecules like that and kinetic pumps acquire some kinetic energy by means of heat or some supersonic energy like that and then they eject out and impart some momentum to gas molecules to move in another direction i think the discussion may not make a clear picture of the operation of the positive displacement pump and kinetic pump we shall make it clear by two videos uh, later on so let me uh, give some other information about the rotary pump and then we shall move to the video the rotary pump is a vacuum pump and it is a positive displacement pump already mentioned because it can displace the gas molecules from one volume to another volume and exhaust it to the open atmosphere and the vacuum that can be obtained by the rotary pump is about say usually 10 to the power 5 pascal or 760 torr like that and vacuum pump can be described as a device that removes gas molecules from an enclosure and create a certain partial pressure it was invented by otto von go uh, in 1650 and typical plastic or rubber seal piston pump can create a minimum of 10 to the power 3 pascal pressure the this, these are basically the previously uh, or initially produced rotary vane pump 
and rotary vein oil pump which uh, is used nowadays can produce a low pressure as much as 10 to the power minus 3 millibar and it can exhaust to the atmosphere yes now one can see the construction of rotary pump that will be easier to understand rotary vent pump works on a positive displacement pumping principle it can exhaust to the atmosphere and if you if you look into the uh, internal construction of the pump you can see this is inlet inlet means this part is attached with a vacuum chamber so we, we can insert a vacuum chamber in this region and this part is the inlet pipe through which the gas molecules can enter into the pump this can enter into the pump and then there you can see this is the rotor this this bar this is rotor and these two black part left side and right side these are the vents and this rotor when rotates like this you can see this volume this white part this volume this volume is now trapped because this part is closed in this end also this is closed so all the gas molecules here is now trapped inside this white part cavity this white color cavity and then when it rotate further then what happens during the time of rotation when this rod rotates this rotor rotates then this comes this way this way and at a certain time this part exhaust pipe opens and the volume during the time of rotation this volume this white part volume this part this volume decreases and the pressure increases and this high pressure so that in this part in the second part this high pressure is created and this valve opens sorry sorry this valve this orange color valve opens and gets exhaust to the outside this is how the rotary pump works now let me show you the video the video is is it visible yes sir yes visible oh. okay when i'm playing this video i, I can't uh, i can't understand whether the video is visible or not clearly that's why okay now you look into the video turning on this second device so that i can also see this in this video you can see uh, two part this is the vein uh, this vein and this vein and you can see this two part uh, one is the uh, i am playing this video a uh, blue part another is red part you can see through the blue part the gas molecules are getting inserted inside the pump and then in the red part you can see the volume is contracted and as the volume contracted this uh, valve opens and the red red arrow indicates the gas is exhausted into the outside <clears throat> i'm playing this video once again for your proper understanding just to look at the blue blue color and the red color and the change in the volume the blue color first uh, gets expanded and then it contracted into the red color red color indicates that it is contracted the volume is sinking
I hope uh, the working principle of the rotary brain pump is now uh, very clear. So let me go to the presentation slide once again. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> now I think after seeing this video, uh, if you just look into the working of the rotary pump, this statement, uh, four statement has been given for four different stages that can be easily understood. The first 180 degree rotation of the rotor induces the gas into the pumping chamber. This first figure you can see, introduction. So the gas molecules are introduced inside the chamber, this black part, this part, this black part. this one this black part it is now just trapped in the second figure it is very clear that this black gas molecules are now trapped so the you can see that that is why boils low uh, gas pressure decreases in proportion to the uh, increase in its volume this draws the gas into the pump and generates the required vacuum in the second step, what gets it is get isolated from the vacuum chamber because here is the vacuum chamber. This part is connected with the vacuum chamber, and this part which is connected with the uh, cavity only <clears throat> because this black part is now trapped in, inside the cavity. This gas molecules. Now further rotation, what makes it makes uh, shrinkage in the volume. You can see this in the third part. This is the volume. In the fourth part, you can see this volume is now decreased. As the volume decreases, the pressure is higher inside according to Boyle's law. And due to high pressure, this exhaust valve opens and the gas is discharged outside. So that is how the positive displacement pump can easily discharge the gas molecules into the environment. So this is how a rotary pump basically works. So let me now move to the second pump which is called the diffusion pump okay. diffusion pump is not a uh, primary pump it is called a secondary pump this is because the diffusion pump cannot exhaust or discharge the gas molecules in the open environment it requires the help of primary pump like rotary pump but the basic working principle of diffusion pump is very simple but it requires connected with a rotary pump or any primary pump in series with its exhaust connection, exhaust pipe. Inside a diffusion pump, silicon oil is boiled and vaporized in multi stage jet assembly. Multi stage jet assembly you can see in the second figure because the first figure actually shows the outside view of the diffusion pump this figure is basically outside view and the inner view you can see in the second figure this is the one stage of jet and this is another jet stage this is another jet stage so multi jet stage assembly is constructed inside and there is a heater inside uh, there is the heater this one is the heater and this is a chamber where silicon oil are kept so the silicon oil are heated inside for vaporization and silicon vapor moves upward. Oil vapors emerges from the nozzle and impart momentum on the residual gas molecules and drive them towards the bottom of the pump. This is what the gas molecules move up and they come out through the nozzles of the multi stage this nozzle, this nozzle, and this nozzle. Uh, this picture will not make a clear view. I shall show another video for that also that will make it clear. Then molecules are compressed in the bottom side and when the molecules compress in the bottom side, the pressure increase in the bottom side. Upper side is low pressure of low pressure and the lower side of the diffusion pump is of high pressure. And when it is connected, the exhaust line is connected with the primary pump, it takes out all the molecules. As a result, what happens? These molecules get exhausted through the primary pump into the environment and low pressure is created. Diffusion pump has no vibration. It is a very uh, important that uh, the noise is very low 
and it can produce a vacuum as much as 1 millitor to 10 to the power minus tor, minus 10 tor under liquid nitrogen cooling. This is a diagram which will make the understanding very clear. Uh, you can see in the schematic diagram. This is not the actual figure, this is a schematic diagram for understanding. This is the heater and above this there is, sorry, this is heater, heater and this part is basically uh, silicon oil and this silicon oil after vaporization they move towards upward direction and they get some nozzles to come out in this direction and this direction and in this direction through the multi-stage nozzles and when they are coming through the nozzles their direction of motion changes initially you can see they are moving upward in the upward direction but when coming out from the nozzles they are coming downward direction so that during the collision with the gas molecules they will impart downward momentum to the gas molecules and these gas molecules will be moving downward because of the downward momentum and the pressure will be higher at this region because all the gas molecules getting extra momentum downward momentum from the silicon oil vapor will come down and high pressure will be created in the lower part as compared to the higher part this part will be of low pressure this part will be of high pressure and this high pressure this lower part is high pressure these are moving towards the baking pump baking pump is primary rotary pump and rotary pump collects all these molecules which are coming this lower region and they are collected by the baking pump and exhausted to the atmosphere. So this is how a diffusion pump work. The entire thing which I have just described is now uh, given in the statement in the uh, bulleted points here. Okay. So I think uh, the working of diffusion pump is also clear but to make it more clear let us uh, move to another video that is a very interesting video created by a company which actually produced the diffusion pump. Is the video visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. You can see the silicon vapors are moving upward and they are coming out through the nozzles with high kinetic energy. Just look at the silicon oil vapor moving upward and coming with a high velocity and you look at the green bubbles these are basically air molecules argon molecules or helium gas hydrogen gas nitrogen gas water they are inside the chamber and they are getting some low direction what uh, uh, lower directional momentum they are imparted with the momentum in the downward direction and they are getting collected at the bottom part with the exhaust pump, primary pump. These are the internal construction of the diffusion pump. Inside this chamber, the silicon oil are poured. These are the actual figure out of a diffusion pump. This is a heater. Heater is glowing. Silicon gets heated up. Vapors created. Vapors moving upward. Coming through the nozzles. With a high kinetic energy and low. With a high momentum. Imparting. This momentum will be imparted to the gas molecules. The green dots are basically gas molecules. And this blue thing you can see, this blue are basically pipes for cooling. Liquid nitrogen are allowed to flow through this uh, white surrounding spiral pipe. 
in order to cool down the silicon oil so that silicon oil can get back inside the chamber only gas molecules will be exhausted out and the silicon oil is cooled down by the liquid nitrogen and they are collected in the division pump once again for producing the silicon oil vapor i hope the working of the depletion pump is also clear so let me move to the next slide in presentation mode once again okay okay so up to this we got an idea about the low dimensional material and the vacuum system next a uh, few slides i shall spend for the plasma since our discussions are mainly based on the sputtering system so one part of the vacuum system we understood next is the gas plasma the gas plasma can be created gas plasma can be created inside the vacuum chamber and for this we need low pressure created inside the chamber and a high electric field why low pressure is re uh, required this is because if we produce a voltage difference of uh, several uh, kilovolts say 1 kV or 2 kV kilovolt this voltage drop will occur across the gas molecules inside the chamber between the two electrodes cathode and anode and this voltage drop per molecule will create how much energy is imparted to the each molecule if it equals to the ionization energy of the gas molecule then the electrons are ejected from the gas molecule and ion and electrons are created this ions and electrons when they are created then they produce a growing plasma and this plasma once uh, become stable inside the chamber then there are a large amount of ions and electrons inside if we use argon gas then argon gets ionized at a particular applied voltage at a particular low pressure at high pressure what happens there are a large number of argon molecules so potential drop voltage drop per molecule is low if there are thousand argon molecules per in voltage then voltage will be 0.001 per molecule therefore we require low pressure inside once low pressure is there then the number of molecules will be very low so 10 molecules per in volume per centimeter cube then this 10 molecules only experience this high voltage drop 1 kV 1000 volt so it will create the required ionization potential across the molecule and the molecules will get ionized gas molecules and the plasma will be created growing plasma will be created so sputtering require this plasma and uh, this is the acceleration of the ions created during the plasma stage state and this accelerated ions by the electric field gets high kinetic energy and hence high momentum which can be imparted to the target attached with the cathode so this is the requirement of plasma creation inside a chamber how to create plasma for sputtering there are some statements made for this Uh, for sputtering it need to create plasma for a gas preferably by inert gas like helium and argon because during the time of plasma creation this helium and argon after getting ionized they may produce chemical reaction that is why we need inert gases which are less prone to produce any chemical reaction so helium and argon gas are preferable for creating plasma for sputtering system in a vacuum chamber gas molecules are allowed to enter so an inlet if argons are required then at first we have to create a vacuum that is the nitrogen oxygen whatever they are inside the chamber that has to be exhausted out and then some of the intended gas molecules like argon or helium can be inserted into the system gas chamber vacuum chamber then these gas molecules when undergo a electric potential difference then they become ionized and after getting ionization they get accelerated towards the electrodes during the time of acceleration they collide with the remaining molecules they create secondary ionization and large amount of ions and electrons are created due to the collision and ionization by the electric field so growing plasma state is achieved for creating a plasma 
inside a vacuum system it requires to maintain 10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power minus 6 millibar of base pressure 10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power minus 6 millibar and that can be achieved by a combination of rotary and diffusion pump together because only a rotary pump cannot produce 10 to the power minus 6 millibar this much of vacuum cannot be created that is why rotary and diffusion pump combination is required both together can produce this kind of vacuum after the vacuum is achieved and the pump is run allowed to run for uh, approximately half an hour or one hour then the chamber may be allowed to introduce some intended gas molecules like argon and helium after a dc voltage and a radio frequency signal is applied then these gas molecules become ionized and glowing plasma created inside the chamber and this plasma state can produce continuous ions and electrons and these ions after getting sufficient kinetic energy and momentum being accelerated by the applied field and makes collision with the target during collision impart momentum to the target molecule the target molecule getting excited they are ejected out and they are deposited in a substrate kept inside the chamber so this is how the sputtering can be achieved by using plasma so for plasma generation the pressure control inside the chamber is very much important and that can be monitored by a pyrene gauge the figure here you can see this is a figure of pyrene gauge uh, the pressure can be monitored by this during the insertion of gas inside the chamber argon and helium whatever require but for reactive sputtering oxygen and other reactive gases also can be introduced inside the chamber if reaction is required okay so how this plasma can be created plasma can be created in two different way using a dc applied bias then it is called dc plasma in such case a dc discharge plasma system is configured with the help of a negative electrode and a positive electrode and gas filled inside the chamber a few hundred volts typically a one kilo volt is required to be applied to maintain the sustainable discharge and uh, plasma to be sustainable the type of discharge formed between the electrodes depends upon many factors the important factors which are required to be monitored are basically already mentioned the pressure inside the nature of the working gas because different gas require different uh, applied voltage based on its ionization potential argon helium they are inert gas so uh, they require high voltage for creating the uh, plasma state and the applied voltage should be controlled in order to accelerate the ions once the plasma state is achieved then also the voltage can be increased in order to accelerate the ions towards the electrode and the geometry of the discharge is also very important because the electrodes can be circular shaped can be uh, different other shapes so depending on the depending on the shapes of the electrodes the plasma also takes some different kinetics and different angle of collision so these are the things which should be looked after carefully for producing a good quality of thin film by DC plasma. And uh, this is basically regarding the kinematics of the plasma. Uh, basically sheets are formed in the plasma. Sheets, what, uh, let me introduce what is sheet first. Sheets is basically a dark region in the plasma. These are created uh, just in contact with the uh, conductive parts of the cathodes and anodes. The electrons uh, are basically uh, charged particles are basically uh, they are collected by the electrodes with a high speed uh, at the adjacent region of the electrode and the plasma is uh, not growing at this stage and these are called sheath and the potential is effectively low and uh, as we move to the inner part of the plasma the potential increases the potential distribution of the plasma is shown, is shown in the second plot here you can see this is the potential distribution. Uh, this is uh, the third figure is basically potential distribution and the second figure is the ion density and electron density distribution the blue plot is for the ion density and the green is for the electron density because electrons are the uh, particles of less mass argon plus ion has higher mass than the electrons therefore the ni the number of ions collected by the electrode is less as they can move slowly 
but the electrons being a very light particle can easily move and produce this uh, low density of the electrons and plasma potential is gradually falling towards the electrode. Okay. Next, uh, a plasma can also be understood by means of its conductance and admittance. Basically, plasma can be described in terms of some equivalent electronic circuits. A resistance, capacitance, and an inductance connected in uh, the series and uh, capacitor being parallel with the series connection of the this one series connection of the inductance and the resistance with the plasma capacitance. This can describe the quality of the plasma with its equivalent inductance, resistance, and capacitance. Similarly, the sheath region that can also be described by a diode atoms because we know the electrons being a lighter particle will be collected faster so that it will show a unidirectional current just like a diode. The electrons will be allowed to move but uh, the ions being heavier they will move very slow. They will produce a minor current where major current will be due to the electrons. So that is why uh, this part can be explained by inserting an equivalent diode behavior and the capacitance uh, due to the presence of the ions and uh, effective resistance. So an uh, equivalent electrical description or electronic description of the plasma can be provided. Uh, this is basically a part of the plasma diagnosis and the other thing which is not directly linked with the uh, thin film preparation but uh, for better understanding of the quality of the plasma we require to uh, know the plasma conductance and admittance because uh, in case of radio frequency magnetron sputtering some uh, signal is inserted radio frequency signal and that has to be tuned with the plasma conductance otherwise the plasma state doesn't become sustainable. That is why this introductory slide has been displayed here. Okay, so after DC plasma, now we are discussing about the radio frequency plasma. In sputtering, uh, these two types of plasma are usually used. Uh, one is the radio frequency one, another is the DC. Uh, already DC part has been discussed, so I am now moving to the radio frequency part. The first uh, figure basically representing a plasma state created inside a chamber, vacuum chamber. This is a vacuum chamber and through a window in the vacuum chamber one can see inside the plasma has been created. And the second figure is the radio frequency signal generator. It produces the radio frequency alternating signal and it is fit inside the chamber between the two electrodes to produce the plasma. So radio frequency signal can produce plasma with a better control. That is why radio frequency plasma is uh, chosen uh, for thin film preparation and it, this has some other advantages because the non-conductive films like metal oxide, say zinc oxide, cadmium oxide, titanium oxide, these are non-conductive oxide materials that cannot be uh, transformed into thin film by DC plasma. That is why for non-conductive target materials, we have to consider about the radio frequency plasma because radio frequency plasma doesn't require a uh, conductive target material. So these are the advantages of the radio frequency plasma. So let me move to the next. Yeah. Now the sputtering mechanism is uh, shown here by a uh, schematic figure. You can see the upper figure. This one is basically this is a basically a target where the target atoms are shown. This is connected with a voltage source, DC plasma basically, uh, DC voltage. And then the plasma, this uh, orange part is basically plasma state. Some ions are created, ions are moving upward. You can see getting accelerated by the potential, negative potential connected with this. And this creates the high energy and high momentum argon plus ions. These ions after collision transform this transfer this momentum and energy to the molecules and they after getting detached from the target comes down and they are deposited over the substrate say this is a silicon wafer the silicon wafer they are deposited over this surface and thin films are produced. And this collision of the plasma uh, plasma generated ions with the target is another important thing this depend on different things, angle of incidence, the momentum transferred, the energy transferred. So this kinetics is a target kinetics, which is a very important matter of 
the detachment of the atoms or molecules from the target. Similarly, in case of RF plasma, this DC signal will be replaced by a RF signal. This part only will be changed for the RF pattern. Moving to the next. This is how we can see the DC plasma uh, in a schematic figure. The DC sputtering, DC sputtering is the process of deposition of thin film plasma where DC plasma is created using gases like argon, nitrogen, even oxygen for reactive plasma. For the oxides, one can choose the oxygen also. Sometimes mixture of oxygen and argon are created because oxygen molecules cannot uh, create a good plasma uh, in uh, efficiency that is the sputtering yield sometimes becomes very low for oxygen so if it is accompanied with the argon argon can create a high plasma yield efficiency is higher so argon oxygen mixture are sometimes used for reactive sputtering gas ions are accelerated by the applied dc voltage and attains high kinetic energy the energetic ions collide with the target material to be deposited a typical gas pressure required for this is about 0.001 millibar This, this is sputtering is useful for metals and uh, metal oxides and alloys, but metal oxides which are conductive only for this because DC plasma cannot be used for the non-conductive purely dielectric materials are not uh, chosen for DC sputtering. Second is uh, DC sputtering mechanism. Already it has been described in the previous one. I'm just uh, showing uh, the slide. Uh, just uh, you can see argon gets excited inside the electric field this argon excited electron and uh, it creates the argon ion and the electrons the electrons collide with the argon once again with the secondary ionization and the excited argon and electrons are obtained and this initiate the plasma and the rest of the things are basically which were described in the earlier slide that uh, they will make collision and the secondary ionization inside the gas chamber itself and the final uh, collision will be with the target material and you can see this uh, pump is to be continuously turned on to take out the argon gases and to maintain a consistent pressure inside the chamber argon gases are supplied inside the chamber from an argon cylinder and the amount of argon gas uh, that much has to be inserted into the chamber is controlled by a mass flow meter mfs mfs mass flow controller mfc this mass flow controller controls how much argon gas is to be inside and inside the chamber so that this particular pressure of 0 0.001 millibar can be maintained inside this is for the target kinetics already i have mentioned that whether this uh, target uh, molecule will be detached from the post material is dependent on the type of the collision and it depends on the mass of the ions mass of the target atom and the angle of incidence and if we do some classical mechanics on that one can easily find out the amount of energy that has to be transformed transferred to the target atom if it is et just you look into the last equation here it is the energy transferred to the target atom and ei is the energy at which that has been achieved during the acceleration in the plasma state. If the argon ion achieved energy EI and the part ET has been imparted to the target molecule, then that can be obtained during the time of collision. This equation can be obtained by simple classical calculations. 4 MTMI, 4 uh, MTMI cos square theta divided by MI plus MT. So it depends on the angle of incidence of the collision. So these are the important things related with the target kinetics. Okay, so after that we can see what are the different uh, control parameters related to sputtering technique. The first one is the gas chamber pressure. The pressure inside the gas chamber controls the quality of the plasma and the amount of the molecules I should say the argon ions, the gas molecules control the number of ions to make collision with the target atoms and the applied DC voltage. Applied DC voltage initially it requires to ignite the plasma and then to accelerate the ions. 
So applied DC voltage should be controlled in order to increase the energy of the ions. And the thickness of the film can be controlled by the time of deposition. How long we shall allow this substrate to stay inside the plasma chamber so that the ions and molecules will be deposited over there. So time of deposition is another control parameter for quality maintenance of the film. And the separation between the target electrodes is also important because how much amount of the molecules will come to be deposited over the substrate is dependent on the distance. And the nature of the sputtering gas, argon, nitrogen, generally argon, nitrogen, helium, oxygen, these are used as the sputtering gas. So sputtering yield is also dependent on the nature of the gas. Because different gas has different mass and different ionization potential. But there are certainly some problems with the DC sputtering. And uh, here I have mentioned some problems with DC sputtering. You can see the bulleted points like relatively high pressure, uh, overloads, pumps, and the causing contamination and lack of control over the process. These are some mentionable problems with DC sputtering. And bombardment of the substance with energetic neutrals and negative ions. Some negative ions are also. Uh, at, uh, also make collision with the target. So this negative ions sometimes uh, make some uh, difficulties for the positive ions to proceed due to electrostatic repulsion. And bombardment of the substrate by energetic secondary electrons because during the process of plasma, sustainable plasma, some secondary electrons are created in the plasma state. They produce some problem and it is not suitable for targets, uh, insulating targets like dielectric materials and the arcing, surface, charging, this kind of uh, obstacles comes. And uh, the deposition rate, that is plasma yield or the rate of plasma, rate of deposition is low in DC sputtering as compared to RF. Okay. Let us move now to the next part, is RF sputtering part. In RF sputtering, already I have mentioned that the DC source will be replaced by a radio frequency AC source, alternating source. Now RF uh, source creates a self bias inside the chamber at low gas pressure. In the vacuum, the frequency of the applied signal creates the oscillation of the ions and the electrons, that is charged particle under the oscillating electric field, they also respond and try to be tuned with the applied electric field. And during this time of oscillation, they pre create a positive charge and negative charge clouds near the electrodes and due to which a self DC bias is automatically generated inside. And that is what we obtain in RF sputtering and radio frequency accelerates by virtue of this DC bias, the ions and the ions get collision with the substrate, creating the detachment of the target molecules from the target. RF sputtering runs an energetic wave through an inert gas in vacuum chamber which becomes ionized the target materials or cathode which is to be become the thin film that is to be deposited is bombarded by the high energy ion sputtering of that is sputtering of atoms as a fine spray covering to the substrate to be coated. So that is what simply the RF sputtering is. This is the picture of RF sputtering system. So the first one this first figure, the RF sputtering system made in India, in the Bangalore this system, uh, a company which produced this system. And uh, this one is uh, installed at IIT Madras, RF sputtering system. And uh, if we want to see the block diagram, schematic diagram of the RF sputtering system, this is the block diagram. Here you can see. This is the diffusion pump. Already we have discussed that this is the diffusion pump 
this diffusion pump is now connected with a backing pump this line this is for a backing pump and uh, liquid nitrogen is there which uh, makes some flow of the liquid nitrogen this dots you can see these are basically pipes which make the walls of the diffusion pump cool so that the oils can cool down to the liquid phase once again and evaporates by the heater once again and this is the chamber this part is the bilger this is the chamber where the vacuum is to be created this is a panning gauge panning gauge this is pirani gauge in order to look into the uh, pressure inside and uh, this is the rotary pump directly rotary pump also can produce uh, the vacuum but when we require a high, a high vacuum then we use the combination rotary uh, diffusion then to rotary so this is the block diagram of the rf sputtering system of the internal construction and uh, if you see this <coughs> this is another unit of radio frequency magnetron sputtering this is called multi target rf sputtering what is multi target that is basically if we want to deposit say zinc oxide as well as say manganese oxide together over the same substrate at the same time then how can we achieve this there can be two different targets here you can see in the first figure this is the first target this is the first target so zinc oxide this is a manganese oxide when the collisions are made then zinc oxide and manganese oxide all the molecules are simultaneously ejected out and uh, being deposited over the substrate this is basically inverted picture the substrate is kept above and the targets are below this kind of rf machines are uh, systems are also available so that simultaneously we can deposit different molecules and different elements over the same substrate by the sputtering process in that case we have to use different target together these are called multi target rf magnetron sputtering this is a multi target sputtering system this system you can see this is a korea based uh, company uh, produced this vacuum system they have supplied this in india uh, during 2008 and this system is the first system installed in india from that company and uh, what i have mentioned earlier that i shall say something about this system here we know that uh, electrical signals are required for generate plasma inside the chamber so for that electrical signal can disturb the plasma state inside because the plasma has been created and if if we accelerate by uh, the plasma uh, we accelerate by electric field inside the plasma the ions are getting accelerated but this electric field may be disturbed by the presence of other electrical signals for the controlling controlling means during the time of plasma deposition once upon a time we may need to close say zinc oxide will be deposited first and then manganese oxide then zinc oxide once again that is layer by layer deposition so we have to uh, uh, place a shutter for the zinc oxide when manganese oxide is deposited we have to place a shutter for the manganese oxide when zinc oxide is deposited when manganese oxide is deposited a zinc oxide will be uh, undergoing a shutter so in that case the placement of the shutter in front of this without breaking the vacuum can be done and the signal is to be sent inside the chamber so that the shutter will move and come in front of the in front of the target so this kind of electrical signal which will move something inside the chamber may disturb the plasma state so they have created some fluid driven fluid driven circuits inside this you can see these are the some pipes through which the fluid potential difference basically pressure difference are created and this pressure difference are maintained from this control panel this is electronic part but inside the chamber there is no electronic signal the electronic signal has been stopped here and a fluid signal is created and this fluid signal controls the internal motions dynamics of different parts inside the chamber so that no disturbance to the plasma will be created inside it is a very much highly means uh, uh, high efficiency and high performing device created by the uh, korea vacuum technology 
next uh, is target preparation how to prepare the target so i am just uh, now describing how to run the uh, chintan deposition process at first you have to produce a target say zinc oxide target is to be produced then you have to take one group El group aluminum holder this is a group aluminum holder you can see this one and inside this you place some powder zinc oxide powder if you use cadmium oxide you place cadmium oxide powder then you can place this uh, powder loaded groups into the hydraulic press this hydraulic press and by this you can press the hydraulic press machine different several times and the high pressure as much as you can say 100 kilogram per centimeter square this much high pressure can be created and under this pressure uh, when this is placed inside this too this will come down and will press off over this surface some targets like this will be created zinc oxide cadmium oxide or other materials can be created so this is the method how the target of different metal oxides or some other metals can be created once the target is created target has been created it can be placed inside the sputtering system now this slide is very much important because if we want to get high sputtering yield we need the we need the plasma being confined within a very small volume inside the chamber not the entire chamber if i go back you can see here is a plasma uh, a figure of plasma i have shown like this okay. yeah, this figure here you can see the plasma is confined within a small region this region only, this region only, growing plasma, not the entire chamber. This is the entire vacuum chamber. But by the wind, we can see the plasma is confined within a small region. How is it possible? Let us now move to the slide. Yeah, here a magnetic field is created. We know that inside the magnetic field, when the ions, the ions are basically charged particles. The charged particles when move in a magnetic field, they produce uh, they are basically come under the uh, Lorentz force, B across B. This Lorentz force makes some circular trajectories. So in the circular trajectories, when the ions are moving, they become confined within a small volume by the circles of their motion. So in this way, the plasma, instead of getting expanded through the entire volume of the vacuum chamber, it gets confined within a small volume around the target and the substrate. So the, this is called magnetron sputtering. So radio frequency magnetron sputtering produce confined plasma with the help of a applied magnetic field inside. So this is just the simple physics of uh, the motion of a charged particle inside a magnetic field. By using this, the confinement of plasma can be achieved. This will make the plasma strong at a certain region and due to which the sputtering yield, that is the rate of sputtering, will be very much high. That is why it is called radio frequency magnetron sputtering. So, the thing is uh, just uh, described in the statement also in the bulleted points. The, in the second point, it is as the electron trajectory is uh, elongated, the probability of ionizing a gas atom during their travel from a cathode to anode increases because their trajectory is elongated in the, this region only. So they are moving a spiral path. So the trajectory increases. Total path they, they need to move. So to move from a certain point to a cathode or anode, they move a longer path. And long, a, 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 during the travel of a longer path, they make collision uh, with a large number. And secondary electrons are created. So the plasma becomes very much dense. So this is the, this is the advantage, double advantage. Secondary ionization becomes higher as they have to follow some spiral path. They cannot move directly towards the cathode, they have to follow spiral path. They make more collision and more secondary ionization. So higher plasma state, high number of ions, higher number of collisions and higher deposition rate. Yeah. Next, uh, there is another important part. Uh, this is uh, basically the impedance matching. As uh, already I have mentioned that the plasma can be described by an impedance circuit. Uh, like uh, its uh, inductance, capacitance, resistance, equivalent uh, uh, circuit has been shown in a, one of previous slides. Then when a radio frequency signal is fed, fed to the system, 
then the impedance matching is required in order to get a low resistance so that the plasma can get maximum power achieved means utilized to ionize the gases otherwise what will happen because of non matching of the impedances the power of the plasma may be reflected so at typically the impedance achieved is uh, about 50 ohm for a rx plasma and that can be described like this equation uh, you can say you can see here gamma is equal to zl minus z o by zl minus z o z o is the impedance of the transmission line and uh, there is z s equal to z l is the complex conjugate of the rf uh, generator you know, which will uh, set the plasma impedance of during the feeding of the plasma so tuning involves the maximizing the forward power while minimizing the reverse power so that the power which will be forwarded to the plasma for uh, is transferring trans, uh, transferring the energy to the ions will be increased by the proper impedance matching that is why the plasma system is provided with a impedance matching unit the next slide is showing the impedance matching unit attached with the plasma rf generator by which we can adjust the capacitance and the impedance in order to get the plasma stable and confined and of high intense within the desired power power acquisition at the chamber by the gases so this lc network is used for this impedance matching there are two knobs you can see the operator of the rf sputtering unit can use these two knobs for matching of the uh, capacitance and the inductance and this uh, knob uh, uh, moving simultaneously this knob by increasing and decreasing the capacitance and inductance the desired impedance matching can be obtained so this is one uh, thing which is uh, very much important for getting a uh, very much uh, i think uh, i should say uh, efficient plasma for a better sputtering yield okay so now let us move to the control parameter for sputtering uh, already we know we have mentioned this thing in the case of dc sputtering also it requires gas pressure control because gas pressure maintains the plasma state and its uh, sustainability availability of the ions and the applied rf power acceleration of the ions and uh, the generation of plasma sustainability of plasma everything depends on the rf power so rf power should be maintained typically rf power is maintained at 200 watt and uh, the voltage dc cell bias voltage appears around 250 volt during that time and uh, the time of deposition is another important parameter for controlling the quality of the thin film ppr separation between between the target and electrode already discussed in case of dc plasma this is also important for rf plasma the nature of the sputtering gas cell bias voltage so these are the things which provides a scope of controlling the plasma quality as well as as a consequence the quality of the thin film that is why rf sputtering system has become very much important because through this system we can get a large number of control parameter in our hand by which we can control the quality of the thin film and introduce some uh, intended property inside the system the sputtering yield sputtering yield basically the efficiency of the sputtering yield. already uh, we have uh, discussed in one of uh, the previous slide that the energy of the ejected atom and the energy of the incident ion uh, basically related with the uh, sputtering yield so here we can uh, consider it as a sputtering yield represented by s as the number of ejected atoms or molecules divided by the ions ejected that is in terms of number the sputtering yield the s value increases with the increasing energy of the incident gas and it also depends on the mass of the ion and target atoms because if the target atoms let uh, let us consider zinc oxide and say cadmium oxide if 
the cadmium is uh, heavier than zinc, then of course uh, the iron, uh, cadmium ion will be uh, less in number uh, being uh, detached from the solid target. And the binding energy of the atoms in the solid is also important. Uh, how much uh, Van der Waal, uh, uh, bond is uh, the strong strength of the Van der Waal bond produced in the solid that is also important because it has to overcome this binding energy and the angle of incidence of the ions on the target because how much momentum will be transferred is dependent on the angle of incidence. So this is all part about the sputtering yield and the sputtering yield can be considered uh, with the number also number of atoms ejected and the number of atoms take part into the collision with the target. Now let us uh, have an idea about the chamber pressure and its effect in uh, some extent. Basically the quality of the plasma depends on the chamber pressure. Already we understood that uh, the chamber pressure controls the number of available gas molecules, be it argon, helium, oxygen or nitrogen. And it requires to be typically within 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power 3 millibar, minus 3 millibar. But initially the chamber has to be evacuated up to 10 to the power minus 6 millibar. By the mass flow controller from outside we can insert the desired gas with argon, helium or nitrogen or oxygen into the chamber and the mass flow meter should be controlled in such a way, the mass flow controller that the pressure inside the chamber should be within 10 to the power minus 3 to 2 millibar. For typical sputtering, uh, we have chose uh, 5 into 10 to the minus 3 millibar or 2 into 10 to the minus 3 millibar like that. And the pre part, the distance up to what the gas molecules can move inside the chamber is usually in the range of 110 nanometer or 120 nanometer. Or maybe 1 nanometer for dense uh, gas, means high pressure. The figures actually demonstrate how this is uh, achieved inside a chamber, gas chamber. This kind of similar figure we have also discussed in case of the production of plasma. Now you can see because of the appearance of higher number of molecules and this thing, the plasma, glowing plasma may be of different type. You can see the plasma uh, has been divided into two parts here. So this kind of things may happen due to impedance matching. And this is about the effect of chamber pressure, uh, how this chamber pressure can be monitored from outside. This is monitored by a pyrenegoge. The working of pyrenegoge is not to be discussed, but the thing is the pyrenegoge is to be inserted, uh, the sen sensor of the pyrenegoge is to be inserted into the vacuum chamber so that uh, during the time of uh, interaction with the gas molecules, it will create an electrical signal and accordingly the pressure inside the chamber can be understood and that has to be monitored. Sputtering will become higher with higher number of available ions and the chamber pressure controls the number of available ions. The biasing voltage is also required to change with the pressure because if high voltage is applied for a particular number of gas molecules and if the gas pressure is increased then the number of the amount of voltage drop per molecule or per atom decreases that is why the ionization may stop. So gas pressure inside the chamber is highly related with the applied DC bias also. Now the effect of RF power in case of RF sputtering you can see there are two different figures. In the first figure you can see the RF plasma is uh, found to be uh, spread it expanded over the entire volume. This is the window. Through this window, we can see the plasma is not confined. But in the second figure, you can see the plasma is highly confined over a certain region. Through this window, we can see. Once the plasma gets uh, expanded and blows up uh, in the entire chamber, then we have to understand that uh, the confinement is not done properly then we have to adjust the power of the plasma because with a higher power some of the ions and electrons move uh, due to collision in different way 
and uh, they produce secondary ionization and the plasma expands through the enter bulb. Therefore, the plasma power gas pressure has to be adjusted properly and a fine tuning is required of both of these so that the RF power can produce a confined plasma. Sometimes what happens, the arcing of the electrodes of some uh, different other control systems produce the uh, plasma to be spreaded over the entire, entire system. That is why the fluid dynamics related circuits are used, fluid dynamics driven circuits are used in plasma system inside the chamber. Now effect of deposition time. Deposition time is another important matter. Uh, is there any message? Okay. Uh, deposition time, that is another important uh, thing because as long as we continue the sputtering process, the thickness of the film actually increases. So deposition time basically controls many physical parameters like transparency of the film, its optical properties like transmission, light absorption, its energy band gap. Uh, for semiconductor, the, uh, the band gap separation between the conduction band and the valence band, then the extension and the creation of some defect levels, and some electrical properties like electrical conductivity, carrier concentration, many things are dependent on the quality of the thin film and which is directly governed by the thickness or thin film. Because as the thickness of the thin film grows, it approaches towards the bulk. And when the thickness is lower, it approaches towards the confinement in the one dimension and quantum effects become prominent. So because of this quantum effects, what happens, the energy band gap increases. As the energy band gap, band gap increases, the light that is photons in the visible range get transmitted. And the transparency becomes high. And for that, we require very thin film. You can see this figure, the first figure, this figure. This is a flower. And uh, this flower is uh, below the thin film. The film is kept over the flower. And here you can see the pink color of the flower. The pink color is also visible through the thin film because this thin film is transparent for 10 minutes of sputtering deposition. And if we deposit it for the 20 minutes, the thickness increases and the transparency decreases due to which this transparency uh, you can see the transparency has been decreased, uh, the color indicates. And if we use it for 30 minutes sputtering, then for 30 minutes sputtering, uh, in the third figure you can see the transparency has been more decreased. So the transparency increase or decrease in transparency basically indicates that when photons are allowed to interact with the thin film, they are basically allowed to transmit through the film very less number of photons are absorbed. So the optical properties get changed. Basically cadmium oxide is a yellow, this is for a cadmium oxide. Cadmium oxide is a yellow colored powder, which is in bulk, which is basically non-transparent. But when it is formed in the form of thin film, it becomes transparent. Not only that, it becomes electrically conductive. So it is called TCO, transparent conductive oxide. TCO, transparent conductive conductive oxide. So this is very important that the time only simple thing, the time of deposition can control many of the physical parameters like its electrical conductivity, transparency, optical absorbance, band gap control, energy band gaps, creation of energy levels, many things and quantum effects can be seen. And uh, radio frequency, radio frequency signal, because signal frequency is another important thing. If we use very high frequency, then what will happen? It will, uh, it will just uh, uh, oscillate with a high frequency. And because of that high frequency, the molecules, that is the ions, argon ions, or electrons will not be competing enough, uh, or uh, it cannot uh, respond so quickly with the high frequency signal. In that case, plasma may be destroyed. That is why it requires a suitable frequency of the plasma so that the oscillation of the ions inside the plasma can sustain and can be made tuned with the applied signal. Electrons and ions, you know, both are charged particles that will respond to the signal switching. But electrons are lighter particles and ions are heavier particles. 
So both are uh, switching, uh, responding to the switching. Since radio signal makes uh, switching between the cathode and anode, cathode becomes anode and anode becomes cathode frequently, and 10 to the power minus, uh, 10 to the power 6 uh, uh, is the megahertz, 13.6 uh, megahertz, 10 to the power 6. So it is very high frequency. So under that frequency, their electrons uh, and ions, their response are not same. Sometimes what happens, uh, ions being heavier, they cannot respond so quickly. So there becomes some biasing. That is sometimes electrons are responding very quickly, but ions are not capable. That is why uh, this produces a disturbance inside and some DC bias is produced. But typically, uh, 50 megahertz, within 50 megahertz, we can use for sputtering system. And by convention, most of the companies produce uh, the tuning of the plasma with 13.6 megahertz. These are some advantages of uh, RF plasma sputtering. Already I have mentioned many of the important advantages. It can be used for uh, dielectric material for deposition. RF plasma can uh, produce a higher throughput, I means a higher uh, efficiency, that is sputtering yield. And uh, the voltage or the charged particles deposition on the substrate and even in the uh, cathode can be cleaned by the uh, repeated uh, cycle of the RF signal. So it becomes helpful for producing uh, good quality film as well as reduce the arcing and disturbing the plasma. And DC sputtering is limited when it comes uh, to dielectric target materials. Uh, coating of non-conductive insulating materials are not good with uh, RF plasma. And the application of the sputtering technique, you can see we can uh, find a large number of uh, industries and uh, laboratories and scientific fields where this sputtering technique can be employed. And uh, some of these are here mentioned. Uh, sputtering is used extensively in semiconductor industry for depositing thin films of various materials for preparing different disks and different uh, chips and other things. Thin anti-reflection coatings of glass for optical applications are required. You can see the anti-reflection coating. Two glasses are in the figure. You can see one is uh, reflecting light and another is uh, not reflecting. The anti-reflection coating can be produced by RF sputtering over the glasses and uh, transparent substrates. Insulators like boron nitride, zinc oxide, and metal oxides can be deposited. Reactive sputtering process can be adopted for reaction inside the chamber, and uh, that can produce uh, different uh, uh, desired properties and introduce these properties into the thin film by reactive sputtering. Next, uh, transparent conducting film can be produced for electronics, uh, just like solar cell display type of coating and a different uh, anti reflection coating and a different uh, photon absorption and transmission. Wherever uh, we need what kind of property, this, this kind of uh, transparent and conductive films, electrically conductive but transparent films can be produced. Generally, those which metals which are electrically conductive but not optically transparent. But thin films of uh, existing with the, both the properties, transparency and conduct, conduct, electrical conductance can be produced. Another application I have mentioned here, uh, this is required for the chemical uh, synthesis process. Because chemists uh, uh, produce some good type of structures like hexagonal zinc oxide, you can see in the uh, figure here, the last figure. This hexagonal zinc oxide structure has been produced by using a seed layer. This is the seed layer. This A, figure A. This seed layer has been produced by sputtering. And over this, the chemically grown one dimensional growth of the zinc oxide has been achieved. And that is possible by the nucleation of the seed over the substrate first, crystal structure of the hexagonal zinc oxide over the substrate. And once the crystal has been formed by sputtering, the chemical reaction has been governed by the existing dipole moments over a particular direction and this dipole moment of the molecules during the chemical reaction lead them to grow in one direction only instead of growing in all the three direction it grow in one direction vertically up so that nano rods can be produced so different structure chemical structure physical structure can be obtained by producing a seed layer nucleation layer the nucleation can be achieved over a substrate by dc or rx pattern here i have shown some of the Thin films which produced in crystalline way. This is the X ray diffraction pattern of the films which have been produced for cadmium oxide. These are the Miller planes of 
breath reflection has been uh, measured for the thin films over a uh, wide critical range from 20 to 80 degree and over this range you can see different uh, peaks have been produced these are the breads reflection peaks from different crystal planes miller planes and it indicates that the cadmium oxide has been achieved in crystalline form this is the a film picture although the film uh, shows very small very much small in this figure like this you can see this is a thin film one cannot understand this this uh, surface if is viewed through a, a atomic force microscope this will look like this this is the atomic microscopic view of the smooth film and this is the optical transparency you can see in the visible range the yellow light uh, then the green light are basically transmitted red is highly transmitted only in the violet color uh, starting from 400 and onwards they are getting absorbed so this is the transmission spectra of the transparent thin film produced from the cadmium oxide by radio frequency magnetron sputtering. So let us move to the conclusion. Time is also over. Uh, already uh, we discussed all the things about the vacuum technology and the plasma. Now we shall conclude with the RF sputtering as a versatile technique of thin film deposition. It is a physical technique of thin film deposition. It offers advantages of producing uniform thin film over a large surface area with desired uh, optical electrical properties and very good uniformity. And this technique offers a number of parameters in control side because pressure, then electric uh, bias in voltage, then distance between these, then uh, 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 the, uh, the admixture of different gases, the scope of the reactive sputtering, this kind of different uh, advantages you can take from the RF sputtering technique. Insulating metals can also be deposited by RF sputtering. So I shall conclude here. Uh, this is the acknowledgement uh, or research group uh, which to acknowledge the financial support from different uh, funding agencies, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, and the FIS program. The financial support from CSIR and uh, of course uh, the Institute and the Tech Fund. These are the ongoing projects in our laboratory. These are the list of uh, publications of in. Uh, from our laboratory, though right now I am not working in the <laughs> plasma system, uh, but uh, these were these are basically my uh, previous works. This is our research laboratory in NIT Agartala. You are all welcome to visit our lab. Thank you very much for your kind attention for a long time, about two hours. Thank you all once again. Thank you, Dr. Vishwajit. Uh, it was very nice informatic le lectures with very every details of basics of the techniques and i am sure the uh, participants may uh, will be benefited from this so now the session is open for discussions so i request all the participants if you have any query you can put in the chat box or you can directly interact by unmuting yourself I see some uh, appreciation words in the chat box from the participants. They thank the speaker. So, uh, Dr. Vishwajit. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, can you provide the uh, your slides so that we can share with the participants? Yeah, I, I can provide it. Uh, shall I? Uh, you can share directly. It in the group? You can yes, you can directly share in the groups itself. Yeah, I shall do it. Yeah, it will be good. 
So I think one question. So can you read or shall I read for you? Yeah, let me see this. Uh, is it in the chat box? Uh, yes, chat box. Okay. Uh, so for deposition of CDS, cadmium sulfide tin film, can we deposit cadmium and sulfide from two different uh, Spartan targets instead of CDS for a um, single target? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that is basically what you are talking about the reactive Spartan. Because in that case, sulfur and uh, cadmium has to react to produce the cadmium sulfide because this is cadmium sulfide is a molecule, not atoms. So in that case, what may happen, this cadmium and the sulfur may be deposited in the form of atoms instead of being reacted as a single molecule of cadmium sulfide. So there is some problem. So it is better to produce uh, a single target of cadmium sulfide for a uh, pure serious thin film. Because during sputtering, cadmium atoms and the sulfur atoms will be ejected out in a different uh, direction, in different speed and different momentum. So their reaction may take and may not take place. Some will get reacted and some will not. So the uniformity and particularly the equilibrium between cadmium and sulfur may not be established. I see Dr. Sriman, raise your hand. So if you want to ask, you can. So actually, it's a very long uh, session. So uh, uh, Dr. Bishwajit will share his slides, and uh, his contact number, email, uh, email ID is there in the slide. So if participants are interested, so you can directly communicate with uh, Dr. Bishwajit. So uh, all of you are welcome. Yes. So so once again, I thank you, Dr. Bishwajit, for you know, delivering the lecture and, uh, you know, one information ki Bishwajit uh, has taken, uh, uh, completed his post-graduation degree from my department. So it's always nice to hear uh, from our students and he is doing very good works. So we are very happy uh, to have you here. Thank you, Bishwajit, and hope in near future also you will, you know, participate in our programs. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, so, dear participants, uh, we are uh, almost at the end part of this program. So, tomorrow, again, the fourth session will start at 7 p.m. And our speaker is Shumojiti Rai from IIT Patna. So, I request you all to join uh, by 7 p.m. tomorrow evening with this. Uh, thank you all once again. Good night. Uh, see you tomorrow evening. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night.